back to normal over here. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Welcome back to the Skilled Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 79 of What's on the Bench Weekly. not familiar with this show or you're new here welcome uh, this is where I take you through all the projects that I'm working on some take longer than others that one's been going on forever it's probably three years now uh, sorry it's so dark in here today my overhead light has decided the ballast in it has decided to fail so um, yeah a little bit uh, more moody today <laughs> uh, already stuff on the bench here. Here's the mullet chassis. This is from Brazen Scale. It is a full leaf sprung suspension class two truck, which sounds like an oxymoron, like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. All right, uh, back to this oxymoron. What I've started to do here is I've started to work on the interior of the cab. Uh, and of course it has to be a pretty shallow depth interior uh, to get all of the electronics and, uh, you know, moving parts to fit underneath it. So uh, it's not really that much of an interior. I'm not going to get a ton of points for it. I will get some because I will fit in there. It's not a challenge, but it's a, it's a rule. So I'll fit in there. No problem. Headroom and everything. Uh, I do need to still make up a bench seat. I wanted to use the original Bruiser or Hilux or uh, even Mojave cab interior piece uh, for that seat, nice bench seat, but they're all out of stock everywhere. So I'm either gonna have to design one in Fusion 360 or steal one from one of my other builds uh, or maybe even a parts bin. I might have one in there, I don't know. Uh, but dashboard uh, is gonna sit in there fine. Um, like that, come on now. Yeah, that'll work. It'll work just fine. That's perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, it's starting to come along very rudimentary uh, styrene work for now, just to sort of get the shape and the, and the profiles and everything kind of done. But you can see that my cut door pieces are working flawlessly with the rest of the interior. I think it's all gonna look really good once it's finished. Um, and uh, all the styrene glue on the inside has cured nicely. So um, nice solid um, comp style cap going on there. Um, so yeah, that's going to work out pretty well. I still do need to cut these fenders out. I kind of, in my mind, I didn't want to, uh, but I'm definitely going to need to in order to clear the tires and any steering that happens there. Um, because they'll, at, uh, at some suspension drop, will rub into those fenders and that'll make a big mess. So we're definitely going to have to get rid of those. I think it'll help with the overall copy kind of look of the truck anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, still need to fab up some sort of front bumper and make a grill fit there now too. Um, but yeah, all of those things should be fairly easy. Uh, as you can see, bed has not had any work done to it whatsoever and still quite floppy in the rear. Uh, we're gonna have to fix that. It seems like it's sitting a little higher in the front than it is in the rear, but uh, we'll, we'll sort that all out. I'd maybe even go to a slightly smaller tire size. Uh, originally, I thought I might do the Red Moose uh, livery on this, but I'm changing direction. My friend Hanny from Huff, when he was down in uh, Johnson Valley for uh, King of Hammers, he took some pictures of a very cool pink Hilux that was completely, basically the same cop cut doors. Uh, and uh, when I saw that, I was like, yes, I've definitely got to steal that look. It looks amazing. So if you happen to know the owner of that truck, put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as you can. And of course, if you're enjoying this video and you like seeing me cut up styrene and not Lexan, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. All right, let's get this mullet off the bench and put the next thing up here. Originally, I printed all of this for that mullet chassis. Uh, this is the interior structure for a Toyota Hilux body. Um, but you know what? I'm changing direction. I'm not going to obviously use any of this because the flat floor is way too deep and would not work with the mullet chassis. Um, and also the inner fenders are straight, not pinched like I've done on the body as well. So 
I'm gonna have to change gears and put all of this on something else. It's such a great file. I really kind of feel like it might be time to do just a straight up normal kind of daily driven Hilux on tiny tires. So I don't know what chassis I'm gonna put that on or anything else at this point, but uh, definitely going to use this for another project. And if you're interested in this file, I will put a link down below, just like everything I've used in this video. Uh, it's really, really cool. And it's a great addition to just really kind of amp up the scale of your next Hilux project. So we're, we're definitely gonna use this for sure. On to the next thing. Uh, now, not necessarily a big change, but it is a modification. Uh, here is the Tamiya BB-01 on the BBX, wait, here is the Tamiya BBX on the BB-01 chassis. Uh, I absolutely love this buggy. I love the retro styling, but I love all the modern features of it. Uh, with a brushless motor, this thing is just so much fun. I absolutely love it. If you're looking for a easier Tamiya experience with hex hardware, this is the one, get one of these. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken some boom racing uh, steel beadlock wheels, added some RC four wheel drive BF Goodrich tires. These are the crawler TAs in the 1.7 size. These are 1.9 tires, but I've stretched the 1.7 over them to fit. And it just gives it a whole different look. I'm so chuffed with this one. Uh, it's great that it uses a 12 mil hex and it doesn't have any problems using these beadlock wheels. I just think it makes it feel more, I don't know, racy for lack of a better term, I just think it looks amazing. So um, this was a super easy mod <laughs> and I didn't have to touch the Lexan to do it. It looks so much more beefy now. I didn't mind the tires on the other one, but this just makes it feel much more Baja desert buggy inspired. And I love it. So that's a super easy change. <laughs> Hardly even qualifies for what's on the bench. Now there were a bunch of other things that were supposed to show up today, uh, being Thursday, but they didn't show up in time. So this is a pretty truncated episode of what's on the bench. However, I am going to pull something out from the uh, archives here and uh, get some feedback. So let me grab that. It's always an ordeal. Okay, so here is the SCX-10, SCX-10, full stop, Loco Hawk. This was uh, built many years ago, uh, and it is a fully steam-powered RC. All the locomotion, no pun intended, is via steam. And uh, of course, it's a, a customized New Bright JK body. Uh, Night Customs made this grill for me. I hand riveted the entire thing, so every rivet was driven by hand. Uh, lots of styrene work on the back here. Let me flip it around so you can see that. Uh, six by six, actually powered six by six. So uh, all of this is styrene. All of this was, um, you know, done custom work. Um, I had to modify the chassis in order to make it a six by six. Let's see if I can get this off without breaking anything. It's been a long time. There we go. Uh, so yeah, you can see lots of custom work there. Um, but the main guts of it are all of this stuff underneath here, this whole steam engine, uh, usually used to power boats, uh, GCM front motor plate, uh, and you can see how this all works. The piston, the steam is created here by a propane butane mix. All the powered, all the uh, pressurized steam goes into this piston setup here, and that assembly turns a flywheel, which in turn turns a drive shaft, which turns a axial transmission, and then there's a transfer case, so everything will power all six wheels. It's not fast, uh, but it is fun, and it was an excellent experiment, and I had a really great time building it. Uh, it needs a receiver, uh, and it definitely needs some tuning up, but I would like to get this back out again, and if um, you haven't seen it. There's a bunch of videos that I've done on this in the past, uh, but maybe it's time to do a new video on it. So uh, if you think that's something you'd like to see, put a comment down below or just like the video and uh, we'll go about doing a whole new series on this truck. I think it'd be kind of cool to kind of revisit it and uh, maybe see if we can't get it to go a little bit faster. 
All right, so there you go. That's it for this episode. Um, a pretty light episode. It's been fairly busy around here and hope you can appreciate that. But of course, there's always more stuff coming. I've got a lot of really interesting vintage RC stuff that's going to come to the channel. So I hope you'll stick around for that. All right, I think that's going to do it, though. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next week.